Hello everybody, we thank you as always for tuning in to Longshot Wargaming. Today, we fight a small part of a battle that some say decided the outcome of the war in Europe. The Battle of Kursk was fought in the summer of 1943. The Red Army had formed a salient in the front line around the small Russian city of Kursk. Determined to cut off and annihilate the forward Red Army units, Hitler launched Operation Citadel. The German Army would attack the north, south, and center of the Kursk salient. The resulting battle would be one of the fiercest of the war. Some speculate it was at Kursk that the tide turned and put Germany on her back foot in the east. For this game, we will be using the battle group rule set. This is an excellent rule set for tactical level action set in the Second World War. The German battle group will center around an armor force consisting of two Panzer IVs, a Tiger tank, a Panther tank, and an Elephant tank destroyer. There are two platoons of Panzer Grenadiers, one mounted in half-tracks. In support, there will be a section of Stug three assault guns, a medium trucks, and forward observers. The Soviet battle group will center around a company of T-34s, a full company of infantry, with tank destroyers in support. The tank destroyer force will consist of an Su-85, and SU-152 and will be supported with medium trucks. It is a warm morning in the outskirts of Kursk. The previous day's fighting have led to a German breakthrough in the Soviet defensive line. Unsure of the location of the enemy force, the German commander dispatches a lone scout car to recon a vital crossroad. The SDKFZ-222 rolls cautiously over the dirt road. Just before reporting the area was clear, bullets began to ricochet off the thin armor. An unseen BA-64 rolls quickly toward the 222 and pours fire into it with its lone DP machine gun. Both recon elements would return to their commanders and report their findings. Based on the outcome of the recon phase, the Red Army would go first in turn one. The Soviet deployment zone is the near side right of the table. Their mission is simple, stop the suspected German advance. The German deployment zone is positioned opposite. The German mission is to gain control of the major east-west road and advance off the far side of the table. Hey Rob, how you doing today, man? I'm good, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing good, we're war games, so that means That's I'm That's it, great. it's a good day, yeah. it's a good day. So today we're playing battle group. Yes. Uh, you're playing as the Soviets, and yes. you are charged with stopping uh, and hopefully preventing this German attack into Kursk. Right. So, what's the plan? Well, so, <clears throat> considering where my scouts had gone out beforehand and, you know, provided basically like jump off points, and uh, ideal positions to really initiate the battle. I'm really liking my initial terrain. Um, I feel like I have a very smooth advance into the main crossroads mm -hmm. where we're trying to actually stop the German penetration into the Kursk line, right? So I think from there, once I initially main, like get into those positions, I should be able to hold it. Um, <clears throat> and then the plan is I'm expecting artillery support and mm -hmm. other things like that. Um, so, as long as I can continue to funnel reinforcements in there, I think we can hold out and hopefully we'll see the opportunity to actually go on the counteroffensive. Gotcha. Are there any units in your battle group that you envision being key to executing your mission? Really, I think it's the day of the T-34. Okay. You have a bunch of them. We have a lot of them and really, yeah, they're just... They're going to be the workhorse today. Uh, the, I think the battle lives or dies on their sounds good on their deeds. So yeah, well, good luck to you. Thank uh, you. And we'll see how this thing plays out. That sounds good. Hey Rick. 
Hello. How you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, today we're at Kursk. You're the German commander. You're on the offensive. Mm -hmm. You have to continue your offensive in the face of a Soviet counterattack. What's the plan? Uh, my plan is basically just going to be centered around my big cats. Okay. Uh, try to put them up on that hill where they'll have a good view of the field to fire. Uh, use my infantry and uh, Panzer IVs and assault guns to kind of give them some buffer space so they can use their range. Sounds good. We'll see how it goes. Good luck to you. Cool. Thank you. With the initiative in turn one, Rob, the Soviet commander, begins to move forces into the battle area. Both commanders will move their forces onto the table over the course of three turns. The lead Soviet element consists of a platoon of tanks supported by a foot mobile platoon of infantry. The T-34s move quickly over open ground and seek what little concealment is available near the crossroads. The first Soviet platoon is sent down the rail line toward the train station. A Red Army sniper team stalks alone in the wheat fields. They're searching for a position from which to pick off unsuspecting infantry or call in medium mortars. The first German units make their way into the battle area. A motorized Panzer Grenadier platoon moves into the small hamlet on the table's right side. The men dismount quickly. Zisverschanzen. The German squad leaders order their men into cover in the hedge. From this hedge, the infantry have a commanding vantage over the open wheat field. Here, their superior MG-34 machine guns can be used to full effect. Before more German units arrive, the Soviets continue pouring into the battle area. An additional T-34 platoon accompanied by infantry crests the hilltop and advance quickly. The tracks squeak as the highly mobile T-34s tear through the open fields. Soviet tankers know they have a range disadvantage to some German armor, so the favored tactic is to move fast and close the distance. The Soviet infantry disperse into concealment and ready themselves for the coming fight. With only light machine guns organic to the Soviet infantry squad, the attached Maxim teams will be critical to counter the superior German firepower. Determined to fend off the suspected German attack, the Soviet units quickly advance and gain control of a large portion of the battle area. In the face of well-positioned Soviets, the Germans commit additional units into the battle. On the German left, an armored Panzergrenadier platoon rushes to capture ground. Four SDKFZ-251 half-tracks move into close proximity of the concealed enemy force. In textbook armored infantry fashion, the Grenadiers dismount, disperse, and look for cover. The veteran German infantry are well equipped and ready for a fight. The Stug assault gun section moves in to support the Grenadiers. The rail line and station are a critical objective for both forces. Both the Germans and the Soviets position units and attempt to seize control. Unbeknownst to the newly arrived assault guns, they were rolling into a well-prepared trap. Concealed behind the rail embankment was 85 millimeters of vengeance. A shot rang out. In an instant, the middle stug burst into flames. Without time to react, a second 85 millimeter round tears the sky and smashes into the far stug. It too is lost. An obscured Su-85 tank destroyer delivers the first shots of the engagement with murderous effect. As the stunned German infantry recognize the damage, a third shot splits their ears, followed by a deafening blast. The third and final stug is destroyed by a T-34. Before the ambush was through, the Soviets made a final offering. An unseen 81mm mortar battery lands an effective fire mission. The chaos causes two squads to become pinned. Under the murderous effects of the Soviet ambush, the veteran German Panzer Grenadiers rally and push forward. Now that the enemy position is known, the infantry squads counterattack, moving into cover in close proximity to their enemy. The highly mobile T-34s have out-advanced their infantry support and are left vulnerable to infantry attack. The bow machine guns on the forward Soviet tanks fired wildly to slow the advancing infantry.
The Soviets now bring their remaining forces into the battle area. The final T-34 platoon advances in wedge formation on the Soviet right. The motorized rifle platoon is pushed towards the crossroads in the center, and the monster Su-152 crawls into a Russian hamlet. Dubbed the Cat Killer, the Su-152 can make easy prey of even the largest German armor. With all forces on the table, the Red Army is well positioned to stall or foil a German advance to the main road. In desperate need of forces, the Germans can finally bring the remaining units into the battle area. Lagging behind the infantry advance, all the German tanks arrive. In the German center, a monstrous figure can be seen cresting the hilltop. This never-before-seen monstrosity was created for one purpose, to destroy. What it lacked in grace, it made up for in lethality. Once in position, its high-velocity 88mm gun jerked with recoil as it hurled an armor-piercing shell across the battlefield. A great distance away, a T-34 shattered as it was struck. The Tiger and Panther tanks move into a hilltop position. Both are eager for vengeance. The arrival of the Elephant Tank Destroyer and its similarly lethal cohorts would certainly shift the energy of the battle. A pair of Panzer IVs moves ahead of the pack. The lead Panzer IV spots a T-34 at medium range and engages it with precision. The 75mm round lands, but only immobilizes the vehicle. Back on the German right, the lead half-track moves into close range of the concealed T-34. Armed with a 37mm gun, the crew of the half-track ambitiously engage the enemy tank. The small caliber gun is not enough to destroy the T-34, but is enough to startle the crew and render the vehicle pinned. An infantry squad moves in to engage the shaken tank with grenades. In a courageous effort, the German infantry shower the tank in small arms fire and lob all available anti-tank grenades. The Russian crew is too shaken to return fire with machine guns, allowing the grenadiers to move in and destroy the vehicle. The fate of the war in the east hangs in the balance as both commanders make ready for the final phase of the battle. Uh, Alright Rob, here we are mid-game. Uh, all your units are on the table. Uh, we're about three or four turns in at this point. Yes. Um, let's talk about your early successes and early failures. Okay. Um, so, by and large, um, it kind of more it, it went expected as planned. Mm. Uh, my goal was to again primarily utilizing the T thirty fours, considering that most of my infantry is not mounted. Uh, the goal was to really get them up into good firing positions so that I have the advantage that I'm firing from cover, right? So mm -hmm. I'm obscured. It's harder for the enemy to see me, so I get first strike capability. Uh, that went more or less as planned. We took yeah. out the entire Stuck platoon without a loss. Right. You soaked up a lot of territory as well. Yes, so. exactly. So even if the tables start to turn now that the big German players have shown up, that's still a lot of dangerous ground for them to have to try and even right. press back into. So, at the very least, we met the primary objective so far of halting any kind of German advance mm -hmm. further into the Kursk State. Sounds good. Well, we'll see how the second half of the game goes for you. That's right. Yep. Good luck. Thanks. All right, Rick. Here we are mid-game. All your units have come onto the table. Uh, let's talk about how you feel the first half of the game went. Uh, it didn't go great. Uh, lost a lot of units, lost all my assault guns. Uh, but hopefully now that my big caps are on the table, I can hopefully make some headway. Gotcha. Uh, what effect would you say uh, your trouble with landing artillery fire missions played on your overall plan? Uh, honestly, it didn't play that far into it. Um, it would have been nice to have, but... It really seems like you've been had very fun. effective mortar fire missions. I rely more on mortars than yeah. artillery usually. Sounds so. good. All right, well, we'll see how the second half of the game goes. Cool. Moving into the final phase of the game, the outcome is undecided. The Soviets have the manpower and the positioning to eliminate the attack, while the Germans still have potentially decisive firepower but a vulnerable battle rating. 
On the Soviet left, the Red Army forces are concentrated around the train station and joining Hamlet. On the Soviet right, an effective fire mission is called and pins several of the Panzer Grenadier squads in cover in the hedge. Desperate to seize the initiative, the German armor begins engaging targets with devastating effect. The Panther tank rotates its turret and engages a T-34 at medium range. The side armor of the Russian vehicle is no match for the 75mm round and is quickly overcome with fire. From the crest of the hill, the veteran crew of the revered Tiger tank scans for potential targets. A great distance away and partially obscured, a large vehicle is spotted by the Tiger gunner. Assessing it is a tank destroyer, the commander orders it destroyed. The 88mm gun sounds and the shell screams across the battlefield. The round connects with the target vehicle with a smash but is deflected and goes hurtling into the air. The SU-152 is not destroyed but pinned as a result. In the commotion, the lead Panzer IV also spots a target of opportunity. The most forward T-34 is reduced to wreckage. As a crescendo to the German Symphony of Destruction, the Elephant engages a well-concealed T-34 at medium range. It is destroyed with ease. The Red Army answers back. Caught in the open, the rear Panzer IV is engaged by a well-concealed T-34. The round strikes the side armor of the German vehicle and it is destroyed. On the Soviet left, the bold 251 half-track is easily dispatched before it can reverse out of the kill zone. Unfazed by the chaos, the Red Army sniper team takes up position behind the immobile T-34. From here, the shooter has an excellent vantage of the German infantry in the hedge. Once in position, the shooter scans for a target. The crosshairs of the Mosnagant rifle fall on an unsuspecting German infantryman. The shooter steadies his rifle. The experienced shooter takes smooth, deep breaths as his finger slowly takes up the slack of the trigger. The rifle sounds and the target falls. The German infantry frantically respond with machine gun fire. The sniper team remains safe behind the cover of the T-34. On the German right, the Panzer Grenadiers move forward towards the train station. Once in the open, the Grenadiers are met with overwhelming small arms fire from concealed Soviet infantry. The lead squad is pinned. A nearby T-34 fires its bow machine gun but has little effect as it is partially blocked by a vehicle. An additional Panzer Grenadier squad moves in to support their pinned comrades. They are met with accurate Maxim machine gun fire. They take several casualties and are for now unable to reach the vulnerable forward squad. With waning support and low ammo, the elephant remains perched on the hilltop and waits to be rearmed. The Soviets also send supply trucks to rearm the remaining T 34s. In the center, the remaining Panzer IV is spotted in the open by an Su-85. It erupts in flames. With increasing desperation, the Germans continue moving forward. The Tiger tank sets off down the road parallel to the rail line. As it tears forward, a T-34 advances out of cover to meet it in the road. Both machines halt. A moment passes that is reminiscent of Old West gunfighters. Both crews strain to be the first to the draw. The Tiger fires but misses just left. Immediately, the T-34 answers with impact but is deflected by the heavy frontal armor. 
With only an instant to make a correction, the tiger fires again. This time, the tiger got lucky. The tank lurches forward and continues down the road past the wreck of its recent prey. Once past the flaming vehicle, the tiger is jumped by a second hidden T-34. Without time to react, the Soviet crew hurled a point-blank shot into the side armor of the tank. The mighty beast falls. On the German right, the savage firefight continues. Without any reinforcement, the German situation becomes hopeless. The casualties mount in the face of the seemingly endless supply of Russian riflemen. The last German squads are whittled away and finally routed. With a broken battle rating, the Germans are defeated. The Soviets maintain the position and manpower to control the main road. Today, this battle was a small representation of a much larger campaign with a similar outcome. All right, Rob, here we are at the end of the game. Yes. How'd it go for you? It went as well as I could have hoped for. And probably better, I imagine. Yes, yeah, I'm still riding off the excitement and vigor of victory. Um, I kind of, like I said, I kind of had a plan going in, right? It was gonna be yeah. off the backs of the T-34s. Yeah. Um, even after we chopped down like the initial platoon of Stugs, I was still kind of concerned. Those big cats are no joke. Yeah, um, long shots. Yes, and he was he made some long shots yeah. there, uh, as you all see in the <laughs> have seen in the video at this point. Uh, there was certainly a time where it felt like the Empire had struck back, and I was concerned if I had the weight of T thirty fours necessary. Uh, however, as we the battle progressed, uh, some opportunities developed where we used some bold, distinctly Russian tactics with little care for the men's lives. <laughs> However, I will challenge anyone that asks about that to look up what actually happened historically, and those tank crews had to do the same things for the exact same reasons here. So I think you'll find that this was actually a rather historical representation yeah. of what happened. I agree, 100%. And then also, to build onto that, I have to say the infantry, uh, the fight, especially on my left, uh, Rick's right, it got vicious, but uh, my infantry yep. really came through and started doing work. So Agreed. Very well. Well, congratulations on the victory. Thank you. Thank you. you. Well. Me. And you did uh, proud for the motherland. That's right. <laughs> it's cursed, baby. It's cursed, baby. <laughs> All right, Rick. Yeah. Here we are at the end of the game. How did it go for you, man? Uh, I mean, not great. I didn't win, but... Well, let me ask you this: What, what were the critical moments you, th uh, the critical moments that contributed to your loss? Um, I'd say a big portion is just uh, losing all three assault guns that was big. right off the get-go. Yeah, I mean that's just firepower that I just lost for no reason, and then I don't know. It was just a rough game. Dice didn't roll. Dice. Didn't fucking roll, man. Yeah. Is there any unit that you thought was going to be critical for your plan that didn't work out for you? No. I mean, I I was he relying heavily on the big cats, and they came through. Okay. But they just weren't enough. Fair enough. Yeah. All right, man. Sorry for the loss. It is what it, it is. It happens. Yeah. It's cursed, baby. <laughs> <laughs>